Lesson three, let's dive into exploits, bug bounties, audits, impairment loss, basically everything we need to get a grounding bit of knowledge before we start to get into DeFi, where we can hopefully earn a decent yield. We'll cover this quickly in this video now, so let's just dive straight in. What is an exploit? So in crypto, an exploit is a trick or loophole used to take advantage of vulnerabilities in a system, normally by interacting with the code and often leading to unauthorized actions or theft of funds. We don't want exploits, hence we have to keep on learning to stay ahead of them. We catch exploits by doing audits. So what is an audit? A crypto audit is like a health check for a cryptocurrency project's code. Experts go through the code to make sure it's secure, does what it's supposed to do, and doesn't have any flaws that could lead to problems like hacking or loss of funds. It's a way to build trust and ensure the project is safe for people to use. This is important. It's not a guarantee that the code is perfect and unable to be exploited, but it is a thorough check. What is a bug bounty? In crypto, it's a reward offered to people who find and report security flaws or vulnerabilities in a cryptocurrency project software. Projects offer bounties for bugs that can lead to a loss of funds or less severe bugs. These bounties can be thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. Here's some examples of some bug bounties. Lido has staked Solana, and in 2021, they had a $100,000 bug bounty program. The Solana Foundation has bug bounties, all the way from $5,000 all the way up to $2 million. The Phantom Wallet also has bug bounties, starting from $50,000. Most decent projects that have a little bit of funding will have a bug bounty. Important to know though, if you want to learn to code and become a white hat hacker, and a white hat hacker is one of the good people that basically find these exploits and then collect on the bounty as opposed to exploiting it, the companies decide the bounty amount. Let's run through some of the dApps that we're gonna be using. So this is MarginFi, they've had an audit done, and this audit was done by Otisec. I'll also be showing you Jito Soul in the next coming videos, and they've also had audits done. Basically what they're using is a staking program that was created by Solana Labs, and this has had many audits. In addition to this, they use a multi-sig operation wallet with over five members of the founding team. Soulblaze will cover soon as well, and they're also using the security audits provided by the Solana Foundation for the staking pools. They do not use a multi-sig wallet. The upgrade authority for the smart contract is currently governed by Solana Foundation's secure multi-sig. These are some of the top auditors, Neodyme, Halborn, Kudelski, and Otisec, but there's plenty more out there. And auditing on Solana is very different to auditing on say Ethereum. When the bull market takes off again, the amount of time that it can take for an auditor to actually get through your project's code can be months. Sometimes they have a wait list of over a year just because there are so many projects that want an audit. Marinade Finance. Marinade Finance is the largest liquid staking dApp on Solana and they created the dApp and released it before the Solana Foundation finished all of the audits on the original code. So they've had two audits and a code review and they have a multi-sig wallet which is composed of 13 wallets. Lido Finance has had some audits. Now onto a different part of DeFi, not staking, Orca. Orca is my preferred place for liquidity pools. Radium has had some issues in the past, so I won't be recommending that you use it. Their smart contracts were audited and then they were made open source, meaning you can copy the code and release your own products if you wish to. Camino Finance, we'll cover this in the next video. They've had quite a few security audits and they've taken a lot of time to make sure their documents are updated and a lot of their team is doxxed. So what exactly is smart contract risk? Code dictates what can happen. The code can have things overlooked, which can mean a price falls or increases, or more tokens can be minted, or something can be exploited, resulting in theft of funds. Open sourcing smart contracts after an audit can allow for community devs to report code bugs. The more open sourcing, the better. Here are some notable exploits. Firstly, these can happen on any chain and can happen with open source smart contracts as well. Ethereum network exploits have been the biggest, and if not Ethereum, then Ethereum virtual networks, such as Ronin. In March 2023, SushiSwap, which is an open source dApp like Orca, was exploited for $3.3 million. In July 2023, Curve Finance was exploited for $62 million. And Curve Finance is one of the pinnacle peaks of DeFi on Ethereum. Super important to know that ignorance is not bliss. We have to learn the past to predict the future and know what to look out for. Here's some more notable exploits. These aren't even completely updated, but you're looking at a loss of funds of over $4 billion. You can see over here a huge number of exploits on Ethereum, one major one on Ronin that was over $500 million, and five on Solana. Most of the exploits happening in 2021. And here are some major ones as well. Look at Poly Network, $600 million. Here are some Solana exploits. Wormhole was the biggest exploit, which is a bridge between 
Ethereum and Solana. This one on the right has nothing to do with smart contracts, it's just bad and lazy coding. This is one of the reasons why I specifically only recommend Phantom. The Slope mobile wallet had an exploit that meant over 8,000 different addresses and over $4 million was stolen. It was stolen because the seed phrase was not encrypted. Let's move on to DeFi risk, especially impairment loss. Impairment loss, aka divergence loss, is when you put your cryptocurrency into a liquidity pool to earn fees, but end up with less value than if you had just held onto the coins. This happens because the prices of the coins in the pool can change, and when you withdraw your coins, they might be worth less than before. The loss is called impermanent because it's not finalized until you actually take your coins out of the pool. Kamina Finance has great documents on this, and it's very simple. But let's say you have some Solana and maybe some USDC. You put these into a liquidity pool. The price of Solana goes up, so then more people are buying your Solana and you have more USDC. So you have more USDC, but in the end, if you were to withdraw, you'd have less Solana, more USD. You take it away and maybe you initially had say $100, $50 worth of Solana, $50 worth of USDC, and then unfortunately you now have $25 worth of Solana and $80 worth of USDC. Something similar to that, whereas if you didn't provide liquidity, you would instead have maybe $140 or something like that. So as we'll cover in the next video, the goal is to make profit, of course, and the goal is to make more from trading fees than we would lose from impairment loss. Now, the next thing to consider to minimize risk is the team doxxed. My preference is key members of the team are doxxed. This is not 100% needed as they can still misbehave. But as an example, you could have a marketing team, a CEO, these people could be doxxed. And then you could have a developer who is anonymous. And the developer does some things with the private keys that control the smart contracts and ends up stealing some money. It's happened before. Unfortunately, it happens actually fairly regularly. So you may want your developers to be doxxed and fully trusted because quite likely the CEO, the marketing manager, and the community guy, they're not going to know how it all works. They just know how to market it, to make it grow, to improve the product itself, as opposed to the backend stuff. Open source contracts, team being transparent, and operating for a longer time, they are plus points. Having a helpful community and Discord groups, they are also very valuable. My goal is to take you from zero to hero. That's always been the goal. I'll still always trickle you information even when I'm a big educator in the space. But one thing is, you need to do the research yourself. So let's work out how you can research the risks. So check all the links. Find out the team, check for an audit, check the sentiment on Twitter, risk what you can afford to lose, never financial advice from me, but that's what I would do, and use a dedicated wallet address for new or riskier dApps. This will become clear in the future, but until then, just do as I say, it's just easier. For example, if there was something that compromised an entire wallet address, and all you had in there is like $100 with a new dApp, then that's all that you would be risking. Now let me show you how to roughly look at an audit. And I don't understand everything about audits because I'm not a developer, but you get normally a PDF document, you can find it in the docs, or you can find it in Discord or Telegram. You wanna make sure, of course, that it's legitimate, it looks legitimate, of course, and you scroll on through. A lot of this I'm not going to understand, but I'll show you what really to look out for. There'll be a section which says the findings. Now the findings will normally be vulnerabilities, things that are issues. So we can see here, there's essentially four issues. Informational, they aren't really issues, but there's five of them. If we scroll on down to the next page, we can see we've got these four vulnerabilities. It says what is the problem for each issue and if it was resolved. If it was resolved, that's a little bit more peace of mind. Here's how you can use ChatGPT. So first I have to enable a plugin. This is ask your PDF. I'm using ChatGPT4, so this is a paid solution, but it's important and it helps you. And what I did as I downloaded the PDF, but quite often there'll be a link, as I uploaded it to ask your PDF. Of course, if you got the link, you can just paste it here. So it basically has a look and it reads all of the information for you. So that way we can see if we can explain like I'm five if needed. And then I just said, were any bugs resolved? It says, yes, the audit mentions several vulnerabilities and general findings, many of which have been resolved. Now remember ChatGPT tends to be right about 80% of the time. 20% there are some issues. So that's why it says many of which have been resolved. It's not very clear. So we go through this and it says what's been fixed and then any unresolved. And it basically says the snippets from the PDF did not explicitly mention whether any vulnerabilities or issues are unresolved. And that's good enough for me, but it's very important. It's not financial advice. It's just what I'm happy to accept. So that's a quick summary to get you up to speed. That's been learned by me over years and years, and there's still so much to know, but it's definitely a good intermediate basis in my opinion.
So if there's a DAP that you find and I haven't covered it yet, just jump in here, use all the tools, find out who the audit is done by, find out who the team is, check all the links, check sentiment, do everything that you should do before you go and ape in. And if you're gonna ape in with a larger amount of money, just be aware of the risks. The risk can be certainly very high and I don't wanna cover that right now. We'll cover more about that after we actually use some of these DeFi applications. Now in the following videos, we're gonna go through all the DeFi applications with different levels of degeneracy, I would say. Keeping it safe, a little bit more risk and a bit of degeneracy risk. So you can choose which one you like and at the very least you'll learn about all of them. Stay curious, we'll catch you in the next video.